This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so I've got some updates from the breaking news stories that came out over the weekend. So the, the first breaking news story that we had was uh, about uh, Moti Yacht Alpha Nero and the vessel was boarded by, amongst others, FBI agents. And the second story, of course, was the sinking of Moti Yacht Saga. So we're going to get into those in a minute. First of all, I want to address many, many comments I saw in the comments section after the last couple of videos. The first comments were uh, directed towards the, the FBI in the US. I suspect it's mostly political rather than factual, the, the, the grievances that most people had. But I just wanted to clarify something moving forward so we don't have to have, have this constantly come up. The, the, the most frequent comment is that the FBI are not allowed to work overseas. This is actually incorrect. Um, <clears throat> there are federal laws uh, in the US that allows the FBI to operate overseas. And the FBI has had uh, agents stationed overseas for eight decades. So the, the, this started in 1940. Uh, Roosevelt, President Roosevelt was the, the first one to, to decide to do this. And um, I'll put a picture on the screen. This is a, an FBI attache office in Paris in 1946. This is from the FBI website, by the way. And there are 80 offices around the world, approximately, um, some smaller than others, but, and they cover 180 countries, territories, and islands. And uh, the FBI conducts uh, investigations abroad only when invited by the host country. So people were saying they don't have jurisdiction. Yes, they don't have uh, jurisdiction. They can't, you know, abseil out of a black hawk and, and um, arrest people in another country. But they work with the law enforcement of other countries and they go along as observers generally. Now, if you combine that, another frequent comment, which again is probably political, probably from a lot of Russian bots and stuff like that, but is how can the US uh, go after vessels in other countries like the Amadeira and Fiji? Well, there's something called the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty or MLAT. And this is basically an agreement between two countries. They sign that treaty and that means that if something happens in another country, then the, the country that wants to investigate asks the other country for assistance and they are legally uh, required to respond to that um, request. Anyway, we got that out of the way. So an update on the Alpha Nero boarding in Antigua, like I said. So I've got some footage on screen here that was taken clearly as, as events happened. Many, many agents there uh, who were involved in that. Now the local law enforcement that were involved, oh, by the way, this was done under the MLAT treaty. That's why I brought it up. Um, so the um, a request uh, to Antigua by the government of the United States under the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty. Um, and because of sanctions against the owner, the yacht was unable to leave because um, the, all of the companies in, in Antigua were told that they weren't allowed to do business with anyone who was on the sanctions list. Um, so Alpha Nero was unable to buy enough fuel to leave the country. Uh, they sold them the minimum amount of fuel required for the vessel to keep operating, i.e. keep its generators running, etc. Um, and this was this should have applied to, this is what I was talking about in previous videos, this should have applied to Garson and Halo, but it didn't for some reason. It may be something to do with the fact that Abramovich wasn't sanctioned by the US. Now, the agents involved in the boarding of Alpha Nero was was the, the ONDCP, which is the Office of National Drug and Money Laundering Control Policy, supported by a multi-agency task force compromising the police, the defense force, and customs. And uh, DPP Armstrong, he said that the operation was totally under local control, though the FBI was granted a request to observe. So that's the reason why the FBI was there. Yeah. So the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Antigua says that this is an ongoing investigation, so they're not releasing any more details yet. All right, so we'll move on to the next story, which is the update on the, the yacht that sank off the coast of Italy. Moti Yacht Saga was the name, if you haven't seen that video already. Uh, vessel was a 40 meter yacht, and it started to take on water in the evening. They called into uh, port authorities and told them 
that the vessel was taken on water. Uh, a tugboat was dispatched and uh, patrol boats were dispatched also. And the tugboat tried to tow the vessel to safety, but the vessel um, sank. And you can see in the video footage here, I've got some new video footage uh, of the vessel finally sinking. You can see that the, it's still tethered to the tugboat uh, up until uh, a few minutes before the vessel sinks. Obviously they had a, a problem disconnecting that tow, that, uh, tow rope by the looks of it because it was still on at such a late stage. So also in the footage, you can see um, some life rafts in the water. Now these are um, inflatable life rafts and they, I'm just curious as to how they ended up being inflated. There are self inflatable rafts and they have a device on them, which um, when the vessel goes, uh, starts to sink, when the, when the raft gets to a certain point under, under the water, it, it cuts its own um, cables that's uh, holding it to the vessel and it floats to the surface and it automatically inflates. So it's possible that that's how those vessels became inflated. So there were nine people on board the vessel in total. Um, four of them were guests and five crew. So they were, they were, they were actually guests on when this happened. Um, the guests were rescued into the patrol boat and one crew member. And the rest of the crew initially stayed on board to try to, um, you know, prevent the vessel from sinking, most likely running pumps to try and pump the water out. But obviously they weren't successful in doing so. And then eventually they also uh, abandoned ship into that patrol boat. So every, that's everything we've got right now on that story. Um, obviously it's a developing story and an investigation will be done. The vessel, I believe the vessel, we tried to find out, but it's hard to know the exact location of the final moments of that vessel. We've got um, an AIS signal, which was lost around the time the vessel sank. So that gives us an idea of where the vessel was. We've checked some marine charts and in that area, the water there seems to have been about 500 meters. So it's, if, if there are some questions about whether or not the vessel is going to be recovered. In 500 meters of water, it's very unlikely. And that's because uh, it's, it would cost too much to do it. Um, a few, in 2012, Moti Yacht Yogi's 60 meter yacht sank, actually not that far away, uh, sank and it was in 500 meters of water and that vessel was never recovered and because it, it was just deemed to be uh, too deep, too expensive. So it's unlikely that there'll be a recovery of that vessel. Um, if the vessel had sank in a few meters of water, then you know, it's probable that the vessel would be recovered. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. If you've got any information that you want to share on these stories or any other stories, please get in touch in the normal methods. You can get us through the about page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram. You can get us on Facebook Messenger and you can get us on Threema. Thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to hit the please be sure to like this video. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.